Last time we joined Kriya on a trip to the Indian Ocean island of Zanzibar. First on her list of places to explore was the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Stone Town, the old quarter of the capital, Zanzibar City. We pick up the story the following morning. The majority of the island's population is Muslim, with Christians and Hindus forming tiny minorities. With the early morning offering a gentle light, Kriya was up and about looking for pictures of life on the beachfront. Day two in Zanzibar and it's been an absolutely amazing experience so far. I've seen such magical things. As you can see, it's a beautiful morning and the locals are already out and active, which means I'm missing out on the day. Let's get cracking. From a high enough vantage point, you can view Stone Town from one end to the other. And there are around 1,700 buildings crammed into the area. From what I found on the UNESCO site, Stone Town doesn't cover a very large area. About 100 hectares, in fact. It's about the same size as some South African suburbs. The only difference is the roads are narrow and windy, which means it's really easy to get lost. I guess I'll just have to follow my nose. Most of the stalls stock items for the domestic market and trinkets aimed at tourists. But it was the local art that caught Kriya's eye. The colourful mix of styles and subjects was characteristically Zanzibari, drawing on inspiration from Islamic art, Makonde carving, Tingtinga painting and even henna body art motifs. It's still quite early in the morning, uh, but as you can see, the city's starting to wake up a bit. And the nice thing about that is I can smell some really good food, and I'm hungry. Jambo, can I have uh, one chapati, please? Zanzibari cuisine is very much a fusion affair, with a mix of culinary traditions brought to the island from the mainland, Arabia, Persia, China, Europe, and of course, India. Many ethnic dishes have been adapted to suit local ingredients and tastes. But Kriya's snack looked and smelled as tasty as any she had enjoyed in Mumbai or Durban. Mm. I'm ready for breakfast. Oh, hot. Mm. 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 Breakfast here in Zanzibar is done with the locals as well as the chapati and a nice cup of chai. Now though, we're gonna move on to something a little bit more adventurous. I can't stop just here. And I think we need to go check out the Dajani market. This is one of Zanzibar's main trading places. A very interesting visit for me is Dajani market. Now, it's full of locals that are trying to get their hands on the catch of the day. These fish literally come straight off the boat and into Dajani market. From tiny sardines to the local favourites chongu, parrotfish and octopus, everything on offer is fresh from the sea. The building itself dates back to 1904. And over the years, the fish market has acquired what could be called a characteristic odour. But I think I need to give my nose a little bit of a break, well at least from the fish, and go check out the fruit and veg market. If you're not a local, the Darjani market can be a bit of a culture shock and a sensory overload. But the produce is fresh and delicious. We're in the veggie market, which is a little easier on the senses than the fish market. You can get everything from your cabbage, lettuce, there's brinjols, there's cucumbers. The cucumbers here are actually quite interesting. They're local cucumbers. So they're a little fatter and bigger than the cucumbers that we would normally see in South Africa. In fact, many things seemed a size or two larger than we used to back home. Now that is a big pineapple. And I think it kind of sums up our experience at the market this morning. There's big fruit, big fish, big vegetables, and a big man <laughs> carrying a big bag of melons. <laughs> This is a famous corner in Zanzibar. It's called Jaws Corner, and it's where all the men meet to talk politics. And it's the same place that I'm meeting my guide today. 
Hi, how are you? Hi, fine, how are you? Tell me a little bit more about Jaws Corner. This is the very famous place in Stone Town where people are meeting here and talks about everything, politics, football, religions and so on. Uh -huh. And uh, it's the right place where you can come in here because it's quite busy. People are playing some dominoes, uh -huh. having some coffee, yep. and sometimes watching football in this area here. I think now we need to hit the rest of Stone Town. Thanks very much indeed because there are a lot of things to do. Although the main branch of Islam in Zanzibar is Ibadi, this mosque has Sunni origins. This is a Malindi mosque and uh, it's the one of our biggest mosques in Zanzibar town. And uh, so it's an oldest one because from early 18th century. And uh, the mosque that we can use for praying Ijuma, as you know the Muslim are praying five times yeah. a day, but it's still on Friday that's a big prayer for them and they can do this mosque as well. During the times of the Sultans, Hindu traders were welcomed to the island and their descendants can still be found among the small but vibrant community today. So this is the biggest Hindu temple in Stone Town. There are about 300 temples in Stone Towns and that this one here is the biggest ones, which also all the Hindus that just can use this temple for their, their uses. It's absolutely beautiful. St. Joseph's Cathedral was built by French Roman Catholic missionaries in the 19th century. Zanzibar has long been a meeting place of cultures and a tolerant cosmopolitan spirit permeates the island's culture, with visitors being made to feel welcome. You must see quite a number of different tourists from all around the world come to Zanzibar. Exactly, because nowadays tourism, I mean, tourism is taking number. Mm -hmm. For example, I mean, I can speak more than one language just because of tourism. Okay, so how many languages can you speak? I just speak four languages. I mean, Spanish, French, English, and a little bit of Afrikaans. A little bit of Afrikaans? Yes. Okay, well, Khamis, bye, Danki. Uh, Prasir. Thank you very much. It's Top been a things. great day. It was bye, Amoy. <laughs> After wandering through the alleyways of Stone Town, Kriya was keen to cool off and put her feet up. One of the things I've been looking forward to the most is the Zanzibarian sunset on a Zanzibarian Dow. And as you can see behind me, the guys are getting ready. I am so excited about this, I cannot wait. I don't even care that my pants are getting wet. Okay. There we go. Don't hit your head. <laughs> In bygone days, the Dow would have been rowed offshore until it was safe to raise the sail. But even the buzz of the outboard couldn't distract Kriya from the romance of the moment and the view of Stone Town spreading along the shore. I think this was the best way to end off my second day in Zanzibar. Oh, it's been an experience. I think seeing the market this morning was something new and something different. And then going through Stone Town and then ending it off this way. Mm, perfect. Sheer perfection is what I say. Kriya gave Stone Town a five star rating for its fascinating heritage, tasty street food, and laid back friendliness. And we'll be seeing a lot more of this amazing destination in the weeks to come.